Well, good evening, friends. My name is Joel Fraser with Kingdom Reformation Movement. I want to welcome you to our midweek broadcast, Supernatural Wednesday. And indeed, it is going to be a supernatural Wednesday in the presence of Almighty God. So, Father, once again, we thank you for this privileged opportunity you've given us to share your word from this platform and Lord we pray that as your word goes forth it will go forth with power with might with accuracy and Lord we are careful to give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory in Jesus name well, friends, I trust you're having a wonderful evening. And the Lord has placed a tremendous word upon my heart. I know it is going to be a source of encouragement to you this evening. And this evening, I want to talk to us for a few minutes on the topic, cast down but unconquered, cast down, but unconquered. And there are many believers tonight facing various trials and hardships. And because of the external pressures coming upon you, because of these trials and hardships, it's causing your fate to wave. It's causing you to have questions in your mind. It's causing you to doubt that God is at work in your life. That you are in the will of God and you are in the plan of God. And you are becoming weary. You are becoming tired. You are even feeling as though you are a was beaten with rods. Can you imagine that? He says he was even stoned and left to die. And it gets worse. He says, you know, he, he had he 
he was in shipwrecks on three occasions. Said he was in danger often. You know, wherever he was, wherever he went, whether he was traveling by sea, by land, in the wilderness, he was in danger of robbers. He was in danger of the Jews. He, you know, many times he said he was, you know, he suffered many sleepless nights. It says he was tired and weary often. Many times he experienced hunger and thirst. Many times he said he was cold and naked and all sorts of challenges and trials and testings that the Apostle Paul experienced. And you would think that for one of the most uh, powerfully used apostles of God that he would not have had to endure that today. I mean, you know, when we look at ministers today, they give you the picture that, you know, it's almost as though they are celebrities and, you know, they don't experience any challenges or any setbacks. But the real apostles that we see in the Bible, we're not saying we don't, we don't have real apostles today, but Paul is showing us by giving us this insight into his life is that he say that this is one of the things that you will face as a believer trials setbacks difficulties hardships he says all those who live godly in christ jesus will suffer trials will suffer persecutions um you know, Peter said, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial that is to try us. James says, count it all joy when you face divers trials and testings. So I want to say to us this evening that while no one wants to face crises and trials and setbacks, we need to understand that this is part of the process of walking with the Lord, of being a born-again believer. It comes with the territory. We need to understand that. But although, you know, trials will come into our lives, I want to say to you that in spite of the trials, in spite of the setbacks, that comes into your life it is it it is possible to keep your faith intact you may lose everything that you have in this life you may lose your wealth you may lose your health you may lose like job you may lose your posterity but i'm saying in spite in spite of all of that loss it is possible to keep your faith intact. It is possible to keep your faith intact. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And to discover how you can navigate personal crisis, I want you to hear what the Apostle Paul had to say about this because as I said Paul suffered more than all of the other apostles he suffered more than everyone else and so he is most qualified to speak on this issue of suffering of this issue of setbacks and trials and difficulties Paul is very qualified he has earned the right to be heard. And so I want us to hear what Paul had to say about this tonight. For those of you, you know, you're facing trials, you're facing testings and difficulties. In first, in 2 Corinthians 4, reading from verse 8 to 11, listen to what Paul says. He says, we are hard pressed on every side. Hard pressed on every side yet not crushed he says we are perplexed but not in despair 
He says we are persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death. Notice what Paul is saying. We who live, in other words, he's saying, once you are alive in this world, he says you will be always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So one of the reasons why we face suffering and trials, it is to bring forth the life of Jesus in us, through us. That is part of the reason for your suffering, for your challenge, for your crisis, for your difficulty. But I want to dissect what Paul has said here tonight because there are some tremendous truths in these few verses that I want us to, you know, to embrace and to see tonight. You know, uh, the first thing is that it's possible to be hard-pressed and not crushed. You may be feeling like you're hard-pressed right now. You may be feeling like situations and circumstances of life are, you know, pressing you in. It's coming against you. You may feel that there are people, they're coming against you. They're pressing you in. It feels like you're being crushed. But Paul is saying it's possible to be hard pressed, but yet not crushed. And what we need to understand is that what Paul is saying here is that in spite of the challenges and the setbacks and difficulties that you're facing, you can overcome. You can rise above it. You don't have to be crushed. You don't have to fall prey to the enemy's attacks. You don't have to go under. What Paul is saying is that there's something in us that will prevent us from being crushed. Secondly, he says, it is possible to be perplexed, confused, but yet not be in despair. And if anyone knows about being perplexed, confused, it's Paul. Remember, he had this thorn in the flesh. And not once, not twice, but on three occasions, Paul went to the Lord about this thorn in the flesh. It was painful. He was, you know, he was suffering. And he wanted the stone to be removed. He sought the Lord in prayer. But you know what God said? God said no. God refused to remove the thorn from Paul's life. And we're not here to debate what the thorn is because the Bible, you know, told us clearly what the thorn was. Bible said it was a messenger of Satan that was sent to buffet Paul and it came like a thorn in his flesh but we're not here to go down that road tonight the issue here is that there was a thorn it was uncomfortable it was painful it was difficult Paul suffered tremendously because of this thorn and because he was suffering, he went to the Lord. But yet, each time he went to the Lord, the Lord, you know, refused. And Paul was perplexed. He was perplexed. But then came these comforting words. The, the, the Lord said to Paul, he says, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is is sufficient for you someone watching this broadcast tonight you're going through you know like the apostle paul 
you, you, you feel like you're going through a, a thorny experience. You know, it's painful, it's uncomfortable. And you may have even sought the Lord. But yet, the thorn persists. Why? Because there's the grace of God. Because what I've come to discover is that God does not always remove the thorns from our lives. He does not always remove the source of pain and suffering from our lives. Instead, sometimes God will use these thorns, the source of your suffering, the source of your pain, sometimes God will use these things as tools in our lives to remove character flaws, to remove things like pride. Um, so instead of removing the problem from our lives, what God does, sometimes he gives us the grace Your comfort and more than your comfort God wants to conform you to the image of Christ he wants to conform you he wants to shape you he wants to mold you into the image of Christ and because of that you will face trials you will face pain you will face hardships this is what God was doing in the life of Paul. This is why God did not remove the thorn from his life. It's because God said to him, the reason why I'm allowing this thorn into your life, Paul, and Paul gave us the reason, he said, because of the surpassing revelations that he had received. If God did not put that thorn or allow that thorn to come into Paul's life, he would have been puffed up. He would have become proud and elevated. And so to keep him from himself, to keep him from, you know, becoming proud and puffed up, he had to deal with that thorn in his life. He had to face the thorn. And sometimes, you know, we may not always understand the reason why God is 
allowing certain things to come in our lives. And I'm saying to you, it could very well be that the reason why God has not removed that source of pain and suffering from your life is because he's using that to remove the character flaws from within your heart. Yes, sometimes he allows external pain and suffering so that he can remove internal flaws and issues in our heart that need to be dealt with because that is how God is going to conform and shape us into the image of Christ. So I'm saying, you may not always understand what God is doing in your life. You may be perplexed, but I want to say, although you are perplexed, you don't have to despair. Why? Because the God that we serve is a God of integrity. He's a God who has your back. He's a God who is moving you forward into the image of Christ. He's doing a work in you. You can trust God. God only has good intentions for you. He does not think evil towards you. He says, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you to give you a hope and a future and an expected end. The Bible says all good things come from above from the Father of lights, in whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. So I'm saying, yes, you may be perplexed because we may not always understand what God is doing because His ways are higher than our ways. But I want you to trust God even when you can't trace God because He has your best interest. And because you know that he has your best interests, you don't have to despair. The third thing Paul tells us. The third thing Paul tells us. He says, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. And I want to say to you that in the midst of your pain and persecution, you may feel, and note what I say, you may feel like you are forsaken. You may feel like you are abandoned. But I want to say to you that God is with you. God is with you even in your darkest hour. Even if you can't trace God, trust God, He is there. You know why I could say that? Because God said so. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God is not a man that he should lie. No. Whatever God says, you can hold him to that. He keeps his promises. And so if God says that he will never leave you, it means then that God is with you. He is right there with you. And if God is right there with you, it means that you can take that to the bank. It means that you can act as though that is true. It means that you can talk to God as though he's right next to you because he is right next to you. In fact, he's within you. He's in you. And so you can talk to God when you feel alone. When you feel abandoned, the Bible says that he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. It says that he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And so I want to say to you that you are not alone. You are not abandoned. Yes, you may be experiencing uh, persecution, but God is right there with you. His grace is there with you. And the fourth thing that Paul says is that we may get struck down, but we will never be destroyed. You may get struck down, but you will never be destroyed. Why? 
because God says through the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 10 13 that he will not allow us to be tested above that which we are able but he says with the testing with the trial it's going to make a way of escape that you will be able to bear it in other words what God is saying is that you will not be destroyed he's going to hold you up He's going to sustain you. He's going to make a way of escape. You know why we can, you know why we can take confidence in that and take comfort in that? Because the Bible says that we are inscribed. In other words, we are engraved on the palm of God's hand. We are inscribed on the palm of God's hand. That means that God is upholding us. With his righteous right hand. There can be no triumph without a trial. There can be no breakthrough without first being broken. Yes. So what I'm saying is that God will use these things in our lives, these difficulties, these trials, these setbacks. God is able to use these things. He's able to turn around what the enemy intends for evil. He's able to use it for our good. He's able to bring purpose. And I want to say to you that although you may be cast down, you will not be conquered, you will not be defeated. And you need to know that. This is the mindset that we need to have. You need to have the mindset that no matter what comes your way in this life, you will not be conquered. You will not be defeated. You will not be destroyed. This is the mindset that we need to have as believers. You need to know that the reason why you can say with all confidence that you will not be defeated, you will not be conquered, you will not be destroyed is because God is with you. God is in you. And because God is with you, because God is in you, you can overcome anything that comes your way. That's why Paul says in the same chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, verse 7, listen to what he says. He says, but we have, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And so because you have the treasure of the Holy Spirit living and abiding in you, Paul says, this treasure, this Holy Spirit releases the power of God in our lives. Power to overcome every vicissitude, every trial, every crisis. Yes, the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life gives you the power to overcome every trial that you will face. 
Now we're not saying you will face the trial. Yes, you will face trials. You will face hardships. You will face difficulties in this life. But know that as a born again believer, you are not alone. You have the you know, presence of the Holy Spirit, treasure that you are carrying in your vessel. You can, you know, draw the strength that comes through the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to overcome. This is where we get the grace from. This is where Paul got the sons of God are triumphant this is the mindset that we need to have this is how you need to look at yourself don't look at yourself as a grasshopper no see yourself as a giant see yourself as an overcomer you know how you see yourself is not dependent on your external circumstances no how you see yourself is dependent on who lives in you is dependent on your identity in Christ. This is how you ought to, you know, see yourself. You know, we are controlled not by, you know, what is happening in the external world. We are controlled by what is happening in the internal world. We are controlled because of who lives in us. And so friends, I'm saying that the way that you Navigate your crises and your difficulties and your trials and your setbacks. It's to understand that God is with you. To understand that God is in you. And because God is with you and God is in you, you know that you are an overcomer. You know that you will overcome. You may not know how, you may not know when, but you know because of the presence of God in your life, that you will overcome. Amen and amen. I trust that you were encouraged tonight. I trust that you were strengthened by this word from the throne of grace. I know that, you know, someone tonight, you are in a dark place, but I want to say to you, you don't have to stay in that dark place. You don't have to stay there because although you are cast down, you will not be conquered. You will not be defeated. You will not be destroyed. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God is going to deliver you. God is going to set you free. 
God is going to enable you to overcome. Amen. So, Father, tonight, I thank you for this word. I pray that you will cause this word to stir in the hearts of your people. I pray, Lord, that you will bring us into a clearer understanding of our identity in Christ, of who we are in Christ as sons of the Most High God, that we will stand on this knowledge, we will stand on this understanding, and that, Lord, we will be able to draw strength from our identity in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. My friends, it has indeed been a pleasure spending this time with you. And until we see you in our next broadcast, I want to encourage you to plant your feet on the ground and look up because your redemption draweth nigh. And of course, always remember that the kingdom of God is at hand. My name is Joel Fraser, the Kingdom Reformation Movement. Have a wonderful evening. May God bless you richly, friends. Blessings. Just the mention of your name can raise the dead. Oh, the cold.